Hello Internet, my name is Lave, and I watched Thoroughbreds, which is a film I've been anticipating because it's been getting a lot of positive feedback from a lot of film festivals last year. The trailer looked really slick, which mentions that it's a cross between Heathers and American Psycho. I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen Heathers, but I do love American Psycho, so more than enough reason for me to be excited for this one. Which is about two girls called Amanda and Lily, both from privileged backgrounds who were once childhood friends but became estranged from each other. Now they're rekindling their friendship and together they come up with a plan to murder Lily's stepfather. So quite a morbid premise but it's a darkly funny one too. It's got a real dry sense of humour. Throughout this film I was nervously laughing. It's one of those where you laugh and you're not sure if you're supposed to be which is why I love it. It's a film that is heavily reliant on its two leads, but fortunately it's got two of the brightest rising stars in Olivia Cook, who's playing Amanda. She's got this social disorder where she doesn't emote or feel. She's the social outcast of the two. But then on the flip side to that, you've got Anya Taylor-Joy as this gregarious princess who is socially accepted, but perhaps is overcome with emotions, both are absolutely terrific. They make quite a cinematic duo. It's a warped relationship. As an outsider looking in, you're never really sure who to trust or if they trust each other. Are they really friends or do they have ulterior motives? I was eerily intrigued by them, but also surprised at how my sympathies towards them evolved throughout the film. Anton Yelchin is also great in what is his last performance before he sadly passed away. He's playing this low life, low Low level deluded drug dealer who thinks he's going to make it big time. His character says a couple of times in this film that in five to ten years time he's going to be the kingpin of crime, he's going to rule the street, which takes on a whole new meaning when you think about his actual career and the trajectory that it was on. It is really heartbreaking actually, but it's a great performance from him and it's really interesting to see how his character gets entangled with the girls who expose him pretty quickly as to what he really is. But what I find really interesting is that he is a pathetic character, but that's not to say that he doesn't influence the main characters, in particular Lily. They have an exchange of dialogue, which I do think sets her on a particular path. But the real star of this film for me is its writer and director, Corey Finley. He's not someone that I'm familiar with, but I'm very intrigued to see what he's going to do next. I think it's very interesting that recently we seem to have had a spate of fantastic directorial debuts. You've got Jordan Peele and Get Out as an example, Julia Durka now and her film Raw, is another example and Corey Finley has done it as well. It definitely feels like this is an announcement for him. When I was putting this review together, I discovered that he has adapted this from his own stage play. And in retrospect, I can see how this would work on stage. And it does retain a theatrical quality to it. It's got chapters and very little locations. It's predominantly all shot within this one mansion. So I can see how it would work on stage, but that's not to say that this isn't a very accomplished piece of cinematic filmmaking. I lost count of the amount of times I made mental notes to myself saying, that's a lovely shot. It's meticulously made and there's something very clinical about it, but it's also very beautiful. I really admired his craftsmanship. He uses steady cams with beautiful uncut tracking shots to really good effect. It is really, really beautiful and extremely well made. I also love the sound design and the choice of music, particularly at the beginning of the film, which has got this drum beat score to it. I want to describe it as a jack in the box kind of noise, but I don't think that's quite right. It's like a ratchet toy with these clinks and bumps. It's really hard to describe, but it's, it's like a broken ratchet toy where the beats don't seem like they're in the right place, which I think reflects these characters, these two girls who aren't quite right. And I think the film is about nature versus nurture and who is inherently bad and who becomes bad. And it really plays with your expectations. 
and I loved it for that. So that's my thoughts on Thoroughbreds and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. It hasn't got a wide release over here in the UK so you might have to search to find this one but it is worth tracking down in my opinion. It's exquisitely made in every department. It oozes quality. It's a pitch black comedy and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So thanks very much for watching my review of Thoroughbreds. I really do appreciate it. If you can give this video a like and don't forget to share the lay. Subscribe.